want to welcome you to, to, to the 1130 uh, Wednesday luncheon Bible study from Doctoral Studies Bible Church in Birmingham, Alabama. This is our sixth lesson in the series called The Foundation Ministry of the Holy Spirit taught by Jesus at the Last Supper period that uh, is referred to in the Bible from John 13 through 17. And we're in the 16th chapter of John looking at today the sixth of the foundation doctrines of the ministry of the Holy Spirit in the church age under the new covenant. If you have your Bibles, uh, let's open them to John 16, verses 13 through 15, where Jesus is continuing his study with his disciples prior to his crucifixion. He will return to this subject matter after his resurrection and continue teaching them until he ascends back to the Father out of Acts 1, 9 through 11, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father. So here's what he's telling his disciples about the coming ministry of the Holy Spirit and the ministry in verse 13. He talks about two ministries. One is guidance, which we talked about last week, and disclosure, which he talks about with us this week. But when he, and that it's important to understand that when he uses the word when, we're talking about some point in the future connected to the earthly ministry of Jesus Christ. The when is going to come after his resurrection. The when is going to come after he ascends back to the Father and is seated at the right hand of God the Father. The when is going to be when the Father sends the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus back to earth. That's going to be Pentecost, Acts 2. The when. He says, but when he, the Spirit of truth, that's the Holy Spirit, comes, he will guide you into all truth. That's what we studied last week. This week, for he will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever, watch this now, whatever he hears, he speaks and will disclose to you what is to come. That's connected with the when. The guidance ministry of the Holy Spirit and the disclosure ministry of the Holy Spirit is all based on the when. And when he comes, he will show you what is to come. And that's going to cover the church age period. Well, it's going to be the great revelations uh, of the second coming of Christ in detail, as well as the church age doctrines in detail well just something for you to think about that's what we're going to talk about today now listen in this disclosure ministry of the holy spirit what he just said uh and he will disclose you what is to come he will glorify me that's part of this that's that's reflected glory you'll learn that today he shall glorify me for he shall take of mine and shall disclose it to you. See, part of the reflective glory of God, Christ, through the Holy Spirit to the life of a church-age believer is discussed here. He shall disclose it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said, he will take of mine and will disclose it to you. Now, we're going to have a word of prayer, and we're going to come back, and we're going to look at that, because listen, the word disclose has been mentioned in every verse, 13, 14, and 15. That means it's a, it's a dominant subject. We call that a categorical doctrine being taught by Jesus. Disclosure ministry of Jesus Christ. Listen, there are many believers that have never heard of this. And we live in the church age under the new covenant. Every church should be teaching this. It is the foundation doctrine of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Jesus has gone back to heaven. You won't see him again on earth until the second coming. The ministry today is the third member of the Godhead, the Holy Spirit. And he says, verse 13, disclosure. 
14, disclosure. 15, disclosure. If you have a King James Bible, it will be the word show, S-A, spelled S-H-E-W in the King James Bible. It is the same word in the Greek. Different translational idea. It's okay. Both are fine. I'll show you the Greek word a little bit, and, and the word show is okay. The word disclosure is a good word. It, it's a transliteration from the Greek to the English language. And I'll explain that to you as we get into this. So remember, the Bible is a spiritual book for spiritual living. Can't learn it nor live it in carnality, evidence of carnality, personal sin. In a Christian life, it's personal sin. How do I get out of carnality back to the indwelling ministry of the Holy Spirit called spirituality, which is under the sanctificational work of the Holy Spirit, spirituality? This is discussed in 1 Corinthians 3, 1 through 3. How do I get out of carnality back into the indwelling ministry of the Holy Spirit, spirituality? This is where the great ministry is in the Christian church, in the Christian life. What do I do? First John 1 John 1.9, if I confess my sin, personal sin, he is faithful and just to forgive me and to cleanse me. Takes me back to the cross of Christ as a Christian because the blood of Christ covers sin. For the Christian, he covers personal sin because he's already covered Adamic sin. That's salvation. And so when I, do, when I confess my sin, it restores me to the indwelling ministry of the Holy Spirit. The dynamics, this is the dynamics of the Christian life. So I give you a moment under 1 John 1, 9 to confess. It could be mental attitude sins, sins of the tongue, overt sins. They must be confessed in silence. That's your priesthood responsibility of 1 Peter 2, 5 and 9. Every believer, every believer, one of the 20 status privileges in the package of 50 things, you can go to our website and find this, the 50 free things that you get in the package of salvation. One of the 20 status privileges that every believer gets is priesthood. You're a priest positionally. You may never experience it. Why? Because you don't learn you have it. There are a lot of Christians. They think other people have, have priesthood, but not them. No, every believer is a priest. Every believer is a priest in the church age under the new covenant. After the order of Jesus Christ, after the order of Melchizedek, not a Levitical priesthood. Well, come on. Well, anyhow, let's have that word of prayer. Remember, your responsibility as a believer priest to prepare yourself for the ministry of the Holy Spirit, to teach and recall the word of God. That We studied that in John 14, 15, 16. It's your responsibility to confess sin through your priesthood so that you can learn the word of God so that you can live the word of God in the dynamics of divine production out of the Christian life, the dynamics of the ministry of the Holy Spirit working the word of God through us, uh, to us and through us. Well, let's have a word of prayer. I give you a moment. Father, how thankful we are today for those who have come our way by the internet to study with us at the lunch hour. I pray the Holy Spirit would minister as he has been sent to do, to teach and recall ministry, to guide us, to disclose uh, the things that are pertaining to the church age and beyond it, the things that are important to the first coming of Christ and the things that are important to the second coming of Christ. I pray, Father, the Holy Spirit would once again teach us the truth. He is the spirit of truth in the church age. May he teach us the spirit of truth. The things that he hears, he will speak, and he will speak with thundering addiction to our life pertaining to the word of God. He is the spirit of truth. We seek truth because truth is what sets us free from the lies of the cosmic uh, evil system around us in uh, the world. For we've made our prayer in Jesus' name, amen. Well, I want us to take a look at this sixth uh, doctrine uh, foundation doctrine that Jesus uh, taught us uh, during the Last Supper. We're in John 16 now in regard to that subject matter. T today we're going to look at three things. The first thing I want to do under point number one, I want us to take a look 
at my lesson text, John 13, 14, and 15. Because the word disclosure is used three times. It's used in every verse. That makes it a primary important subject. We call that, it's a categorical doctrine. Disclosure ministry of the Holy Spirit. So let's go back and take a look at that. Notice, if you don't have a, if you don't have a study guide from a, you, you'll be able to go to our website and pull down a study guide. If you don't have it with you, then what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to get your Bible, get a pencil and a piece of paper, and take notes. It's class. It's Bible class. <clears throat> so what I want to do with you, first of all, I want to introduce you to the Greek word that's used for disclosure, or if you have a King James Bible, the word show. <clears throat> it's a compound word. It has ana, A-A-N, on the front of the word, A-N-A word. They, and then the second word, A-N, the first part, then it has the word A-N or A-G-G-E-L-L-O. So you have anagelo is the word in the Greek language. And it's translated out of the Greek language into the English language. When the English language, they use it different ways. It means to announce something important. Uh, it means uh, to report something important. It means to show you something of importance or to disclose to you something of importance. It would be off, often, this word would be used with something that should be publicly proclaimed. Everybody should know this. All right? That we're not going to hold anything back. We're going to tell it all. Uh, disclosure. Disclosure. D disclosure, the idea behind disclosure, disclosure, uh, th this ministry, the idea of disclosure is to expose to view. So that when, you, when it's done, you have a viewpoint. Exposure to view to get a viewpoint. Uh, to make known something publicly so that you are aware of what is there. Now, disclosure of what things, what things are to come. W what is involved in this specific thing. When the Holy Spirit does a, d d does a disclosure, he's showing you something that's relevant for you to know now because it affects a lot of events that are connected to your life. So it's really important that you understand that. The, the Greek word, A-N-A-G-G-E-L-L-O. That, that's the word you're after in the Greek language that's used in our text. It's used three times. It's used in verse 13, it's used in 14, and 15. If you have your Bible, you will see that. And so I'm going to give you three homiletical points. Not that I'm going to make a big, because we study categorically here. We don't, do, we don't do very much homiletic teaching. But I'm, I will give you an, a homiletical outline of this passage. I think that's important. For example, in verse 13, I put down report a report of the future. In verse 13, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he, the indwelling Holy Spirit, will disclose you what is to come. In other words, a disclosure of some important doctrine is to give you, is to introduce you to it, to give you a viewpoint on it that is going to impact your life in the future. Once you learn this, you're going to see how, you're, how this doctrine relates to your life. It's the disclosure ministry of the Holy Spirit. In verse 14, it's connected with reflected glory. Now, this is really important you understand it because you don't hear this taught. It's amazing to me that we don't hear the reflected glory taught in the church. Because Jesus said it is part of the disclosure ministry, and the disclosure ministry is a big deal in the church age. Reflected glory. It's in verse 
It's in verse 14. <clears throat> Listen to what he says. The disclosure ministry of the indwelling Holy Spirit will glorify me, will glorify Christ, and he's going to tell you how. The word for is going to carry the idea of how he's going to, how this is going to happen. How does reflected glory work? For he, the indwelling Holy Spirit, under the disclosure ministry, he will take of mine, Christ, and disclose it to you. And when he does, it brings reflected glory to Christ. He will take what he hears, he will speak, which are my teachings. He will disclose it to you. And when he does, and you have the same viewpoint that Jesus has trying to share with you the importance of it, when you buy into that, when you begin to believe it and apply it in your life by walking by faith, 2 Corinthians 5, not by sight. You have a choice, see? You always have a choice. You can walk by faith or you can walk by sight. If you walk by sight, you, you don't walk by faith. If you walk by faith, you don't walk by sight. If you walk by faith, then this is where this is good for your life. This viewpoint. He gave it to you by faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. Now you've got, to, you've got to work it out in your life. You've got to apply it. You've got to believe it and then apply it. And when you do, you are reflecting the glory of Christ. You are, you are reflecting the glory of Christ. <laughs> All right, all right. You got your Bible? How come you haven't got your Bible by now? I've been going for a good while. How come you don't have your Bible? Get your Bible. And let's turn to 2 Corinthians 3 to 18, and I will see you, I will, I will show you reflected glory in a way that I think the Holy Spirit could teach you as the Spirit of truth. I'm going to look at 2 Corinthians 3, 18, and you will see the idea, I think, because you, you can get a visual idea of reflected glory. Verse 18. But we all with unveiled face, no covering, we're going to see what's real. But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, Whose face? <laughs> Whose face is looking in a mirror? Yours. Mine. With unveiled face, we all, we all, me, you, and others in Christ, those who believe that Jesus died for their sins, was buried, and raised from the dead the third day. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, are in Christ. This applies to them. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding what, what we're really getting a good look at, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. You know what that is? Reflected glory. are being transformed into the same image, all of us, from glory to glory. <laughs> you look in the mirror, and the Holy Spirit of God shows you the glory of Christ, which is the glory of God. That glory is in you. By the disclosure ministry of the Holy Spirit, when you take this word of God through the faith cycle, faith comes by hearing. You got to believe it. You got to walk it out. 
then God brings it to a completed state. That's reflected glory. When there's reflected glory in your life, when there's the reflected glory in your life, when there's the reflected glory of Christ, there is the, the reflected glory out of Christ, the reflected glory of God himself, the Father. Oh, gosh, you just make this thing so difficult. Look, 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 it's not that difficult. Jesus Christ, here's the reflected glory out of your life, the reflected glory of Christ, which is the glory of God, the Father. The reason it, it's the reflected glory of Christ is because he's the only begotten Son of God. And he reflects the true image of the Father. When we become children of God, when we become children of God, and we do at the point of salvation, it's one of the 20 status privileges in the package of 50 things that are free. By grace, they're free. Christ paid the price to give it to you by grace through faith. As a child of God, when you, were like Jesus, when he, reflect, when he reflected God's glory, you see, his reflected glory was the glory of the Father. The Son reflects the glory of the Father. When we as children of, of God, through Christ, we become sons of God. He's a son of God. In Christ, we're sons of God. We reflect the glory of Christ, which reflects the glory of the Father. Us. We all. You know what that is? That's the indwelling ministry. That's why it's so important for you to walk in the spirit, not in the flesh. Galatians 5, 16, 17. Reflected glory. He will glorify me for he will take of mine and disclose it to you. In verse 15, we have the represented, the plan of God is represented. The represented plan of God. All things that the Father has are mine. The Father, everything, all things, all things that the Father has are mine. Jesus Christ. Therefore, I said that he would take of mine and disclose it to you. Do you see that? We are representatives of the plan of God on earth. As Jesus was. And we should live by not my will, but thy will be done. No matter what your circumstances of life. Well, I hope you get all that. The word disclosure was used in 13, 14, and 15. Point number two. One disclosure ministry of the indwelling Holy Spirit is the reflected glory of Christ. In verse, six, in verse 14 of chapter 16 of John. I gave you a little bit of Greek. He will glorify me. The word glory, glorify uh, Dagzazo is a future active indicative. It's based on when he comes. He will do this. He's not going to come till Jesus is seated at the right hand of God the Father. And then the Father is going to send him uh, to earth in the name of Jesus at Pentecost, Acts 2. He will glorify me, future active indicative, third person singular, based on when he comes. For, and this is how, this is hote, it's called causative, cause, it's called a cause, cause of, causal, hote, conjunction, and it should be translated because. It's the cause. It's called causal. It's the because. Or how. He will glorify me, and you say, how? Because he will take of mine and disclose it to you. 
He will take of mine, future middle indicative, and disclose it to you, future active indicative. See, there are three of those. He will glorify me, and this is how he will take of mine and disclose it to you. He'll give you that viewpoint, that doctrinal viewpoint of the disclosure ministry of the indwelling Holy Spirit. And he will teach you of the things that are to come by minute, by second, by day, by year uh, for your life. Even beyond it, into things to come. You know, the things to come uh, start every day with you moving from a second to a minute to an hour to the end of the day uh, to the next and then the end of a week and the end of a month, the end of a year. Now, there's two things that are important in this little, in verse, 16, in verse 13 and 14. In verse 13, he says what he hears, he repeat. In other words, the word repeat. What he hears, he speaks. That's repeat, right? What he hears, he speaks. He repeats. He communicates. Now, remember that one of the things, one of the ways in the English of discussing the word anagaleo could be show or disclose or report. Not only does he repeat, but he reports. Listen, at, look, at, look at verse 14. In verse 14, he will glorify me. He will take of mine and disclose it to you. You see that? He will report all things. He, this word disclose or to show or to report, he will report it to you. He will, he will share with you the divine viewpoint of what's going on in your life, the things that are, that are coming down the pike, both in the plan of God and the big picture of the plan of God, the first coming to the second coming, the bigger picture called eschatology, but also the minute aspects of your life, what's going on in your life this hour, this day, this week, this month, this year. See, that's the dynamics of this great ministry. And what his responsibility and disclosure is to repeat what he hears, he speaks, he communicates in the plan of God. And then he reports to you on a consistent basis of how that transpires in your life. The viewpoint that is being activated by the faith cycle. I've heard it. I believe it. I'm walking it out in my life and God's bringing it to pass. Oh, it'd be so good for you to grab this. This idea of repeat and report under the ministry of disclosure are two key parts of the reflected glory of Christ in the disclosure ministry of the Holy Spirit. Remember 2 Corinthians 3.18. That mirror idea, mirror. Jesus had been teaching his disciples prior to the crucifixion on the doctrine of the reflected glory during the Last Supper period. Here's what people miss because they don't pay attention to categorical doctrinal thinking. Jesus is talking about the reflected glory in every chapter 13 through 17. He's been teaching on reflected glory. This is just another aspect of reflected glory that he's been teaching. He has taught categorically the doctrine of reflected glory all through the Last Supper from John 13 through 17 in every chapter he taught on it. For example, in John 13, 31 through 32 and 3, he taught on it. In John 14, 13 and 14, he taught on it. In John 15, 8, he taught on it. John 16, 14, he taught on it. In 17th chapter of John, 1 through 6, and 22 and 24, he taught on it. 
Let me give you an example of a few of those. For example, in John, the first time he taught on it was in John 13, 31 through 32, on reflected glory. Now, see, I gave you all the passages. All right, wait. Now you want to take notes. <laughs> That's okay. Look. My job is to teach you. It's not to complete. I'm, I'm not in that big a hurry. All right? John 13, 31, 32. John 14, 13 and 14. John 15, verse 8. John 16, verse 14, which, we, which we're studying. And John 17, 1 through 6, verse 22 and 24. Now, let's take a look at John 13, 31, 32, reflected glory. Now is the Son of Man glorified. In other words, Jesus is going to go to the cross, and the cross is going to glorify the Father. You know why? Because he did the Father's will. Not my will, but thy will be done, Matthew 26, 39, 42. 26, 39 through 14 of Matthew. Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. See, when you do the will of God, it reflects the glory of Christ, which reflects the glory of God. See the chain of events? And when you do that, it thrills God's soul. That's a man after his heart. You should be seeking his heart all the time. Now, now was the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him immediately. In other words, when the application of the truth of the Word of God is exercised in your life by the faith cycle, by doing the will of God, the plan marches forward in biblical history it glorifies Christ, it glorifies the Father, for that's what Jesus Christ came all about. The, the, the part of salvation of the human race is one part, bringing glory to God is the other part. As the one happens, the other happens. When you become obedient to the will of God, then the plan of God moves forward. Here's a person who has heard it, has believed it, has applied it, and now it's completed. When it's completed, it brings glory to Christ. It brings glory to, glory to Father. It's reflected glory. It's the reflected glory in your life. You've looked in a mirror, and they've seen Christ. And if they've seen Christ, they've seen God. And they've seen it in you, in your face. Come on, come on, people. 2 Corinthians 3.18. I know you've never heard it before. You're going to have to study it. You can't get this in one setting. You're going to have to study it several times and look at the passage and let the Holy Spirit teach it and recall it and disclose a viewpoint that you've never heard before. He will disclose it to you. This is, the, this is his ministry. My, 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 come on, people. Reflected glory. John 15, 8, reflected glory. By this is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. Where does the fruit come from? Divine production of the faith cycle. When it gets to completion, there's fruit. There's the process. I've heard, I believe, I've applied, completed. There's the fruit, divine production. And you get rewarded for fruit. When you get rewarded for divine production, Christ is glorified. When he's glorified, the Father's glorified. This is a big deal. This is the ministry of the disclosure ministry of the Holy Spirit. Now, I've spent a lot of time today on reflected glory because Jesus spent a lot of time on it before he died. Every chapter at the Last Supper, he pounded this idea. And it's not by works, it's by grace. I know. Now, point three, in John 14, in John 16, 14, in John 16, 14, Jesus used 
a casual conjunction, hote, translated in the English for, but it's actually because. It's causal. In other words, it tells us how the reflected glory works. How reflected glory works. Jesus said in John 16, 14, he will, glorify, he, will glorify, he will glorify me, talking about the indwelling Holy Spirit under disclosure. He will glorify me because, or how? Because he will take of mine and disclose it to you. That's the how. And how does that literally work? Faith cycle. To bring you into a, a viewpoint of, of God's will, categorically, whatever, whatever is going on in your life, so that you can categorically look at it and go from hearing to believing to completing, uh, to applying and completing that faith cycle. It's on your paper under point four, uh, under point three. Remember that you go clockwise. Here's hearing, Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing. And you work, you're going clockwise. So now you come down to believing, because once you hear it, you got to believe it. W what you hear as truth, you got to believe as truth, and then it becomes faith. What you hear, you believe. Once you believe it, pastuo, once you believe it, it becomes pistos, faith. It's no longer in your ear or your mind. It's now in your heart as a belief. A belief. Not believing, believed. It is believed. Now it's ready for application. See, up here we have Hebrews 4.2, believing. Understanding and coming to a place where I believe it. When I believe it, pastuo, when I believe, then it becomes pistis. It becomes faith. In my heart, not my mind, in my heart. What's in your mind goes in one ear and out the other. What's in your heart's forever. That's where the Holy Spirit teaches and recalls. This is, this is where you, get, you buy into the viewpoint, not my will, but thy will be done, that takes you to the application part of the, of the cycle of faith. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, we walk by faith. Not by sight. That you could read more of it if you wanted to read Colossians 2, 6, and 7. Colossians 2, 6, and 7. And then, and then that takes you to God bringing what, see, Romans 4, 21, what he's promised, he, he, he has obligated himself to complete. What he's promised, he's obligated himself to complete. I mean, it's his desire that you believe the will of God, that you do the will of God, and that he brings the will of God to completion. What it was designed to do will have, will have accomplished its mission. A divine production is pro the production, divine production. And then you start the faith cycle in an advanced stage of faith. Now, what you really have to learn to do is divide the faith cycle in half. You got to draw a line through it like faith, uh, hearing, believing, applying, completing, back to hearing. That's why Bible study daily, inhale, exhale, second Timothy 3, 16 and 17, all scripture is God breathed. It's inhaled and exhaled. See, that's that faith cycle, inhale, exhale. On the one side, you got inhale. On the other side, you got exhale. So you draw a line through there. You, set, you draw a line through so you got hearing and believing on one side, applying and completing on the other side. In 2 Corinthians 3, 16, 17, the one side, the hearing and believing side is the inhale, and the application completing side is the exhale. It's just to give you an idea. Now, listen to me. 
the disclosure ministry of the Holy Spirit is he's going to teach you the, the, the word of God to take you to the will of God to take you to the word of God. The word takes you to the will. The will takes you to the work. That, that's how this faith cycle works. The hearing of the word, you know, the believing that becomes your, your will is surrendered to the will of God. The plan now is in full motion, application, completion, and we're back. The word to the will to the work. Now, you should draw a line kind of this way down through that. So yeah, on one side, you've got hearing and believing. On the other side, you've got applying and completing. Now, here's what's important to reflect the glory. You've got to have retention. Over on the believing, completing side, write the word retention. Retention of the word of God. Retention. It's got to move from your mind to your heart. Hearing is not enough. Hearing has to be understood to be believed. Once it's believed, it becomes faith in your life. Faith that you can activate. Faith that you can remember. The faith that the Holy Spirit can recall the doctrine of to apply immediately in your life. Immediately. Boom. So that God can bring that aspect of the will of God into completion state, divine production. So there has to be retention. That's what he talks about in verse 38. What the Holy Spirit hears, he speaks. Now he discloses the Father's viewpoint of his will to you and you, bring it, and you bring it home by walking it out by faith, not by sight. No, no matter what the circumstances, you walk it out by faith. So on this side, there's a retention. There's the indwelling Holy Spirit who hears and speaks it, communicates it, and discloses what is to come. He did it with Jesus, his son. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus said, not my will, but thy will be done. What well, was a, a great statement. That's the only way it works. And then it produces on the other side, when he walks it out by faith to its completion, when he says, Father, the work of salvation is finished. It was finished. Once you get it, once you get retention into your heart by faith, and you begin to now walk it out to completion, divine production. This is where you have the reflected glory of Christ, which is the reflected glory of God. This is taking you from glory to glory. It's moving you from glory to glory. Now you're in the idea of the glor glorifying God by doing his will. I can't tell you how important this is. It's a sign of maturity in your life to do it. Listen to what, this is, this is John 16, 14. The indwelling Holy Spirit will glorify Christ, future active indicative. He will take of mine and disclose it to you. Future active indicative. He's got to come first. But when he comes, listen, we're past the day when he comes. We're now, if you believe the gospel, he is there. And he's there to have the ministry of disclosure, which the great part of that, the great part of that is the reflected glory. Listen, listen, in John, the 17th chapter, in this great prayer of Jesus, probably the Gethsemane prayer in detail. He had some disciples there. One of them recorded it. We have John 17. In verses 4 through 6, I want to write to you, this is the Son to God the Father. This is God the Son's prayer to God the Father just prior to going to the cross. Listen to what he said. 
this is enormous. I glorify you on the earth. Say, that's us. And listen, when that happens, this is where the reflected glory to the Father goes. I glorify you on earth, having accomplished the work. Okay. You know how that got? You know how we got to the work or divine production? The word became the will, and the will became the work. Not my will, but thy will be done. Having accomplished the work which you have given me to do. You see, the whole idea of studying the Bible is to get it from hearing to believing to move it to application to completing. That's the work side of it. The other side is the will side of it. Learning the will side of it. The word to the will. The will to the, to the divine production. The will brings us to the work and divine production side. Here he says, I glorify you on earth, having accomplished the work which you have given me to do. Now, Father, glorify me together with yourself. That's reflected glory. With the glory which I had with you before the world. I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me. And they have kept your word. The next time you have a moment, maybe over a cup of coffee and no television going to distract you or turn your cell phone off for just a little bit, I want you to read John 17. I want you to read it as a love letter by prayer. A love letter by prayer. John 17 is one of the most magnificent love letters ever written. Now, most people think 1 John is. Jesus sent a love letter by prayer. And I'm going to tell you, we can all do that. And it was part of his reflecting the glory of God. Out of, the, out of the word came the will, came the work, and out of the work came this idea, not my will, but thy will be done, that I may glorify your name. And he says, I know that when I glorify your name, you will glorify mine. Isn't that interesting? You want a legacy? Get into reflected glory. You want a legacy that will last? Get into reflected glory. Live for the reflected glory. In 2 Corinthians, the third chapter, verse 18, Paul speaks to the children of God. It says that in Christ we are sons of God and we too can glorify God. But we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the reflected glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. You know what it is? So looking in a mirror. The glory, the glory, looking in the mirror and seeing the glory of Christ, who is the reflected glory of the Father. You know where that's coming from? It's coming from your face. It's coming from your life. You ought to read 2 Corinthians, the 4th chapter, 6 and 7. And you should read Romans, the 8th chapter, 14 through 17, and verses 29 through 30. And then go to the 12th chapter and read verse 2 about transformation. Because transformation is all about bringing the reflected glory out of your life to Christ while you're on earth. Well... I want to thank you for coming and being with us today. <clears throat> Listen, if you've never heard reflected glory before, <clears throat> you're going you're to have to study it several times now. 
You're going, to have to, you're going to have to go over and over and read these passages and ask the Holy Spirit to teach and recall it in your soul. And you will come to discover, as I have, a magnificent principle of the, of the ministry of the indwelling Holy Spirit called disclosure. And one of the great ministries of it is reflected glory. And I've told you how it works and why it works. And it should begin to work in your life because you choose it. Walk in the spirit, not, not in the flesh. And you will see the enormous things and, and God will give you a, a, a viewpoint. He will let you peek into the viewpoint of the way God sees things about your life and your time on earth and how you can bring the reflected glory to God. What else? Through divine protection, from the word to the will to the work. Father, we're so thankful today for these that have come our way and studied with us at the lunch hour. I pray today, Father, as we look at the disclosure ministry, the indwelling Holy Spirit, that we, we have awakened within Christians a subject they've never heard before. The, yet it, it, has been, it has been in the Bible since the first century. Where have we been, Father that we don't study these great doctrines of the church under the new covenant. Well, encourage our hearts today, Father. Teach us this enormous ministry and how to bring reflected glory to God. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen.